how I'm going to uh, work with each of the four participants. Uh, they, they know what to expect. But let me refer to uh, the cards in front of you, 1 Peter 3, 15. In that portion that says, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Now, various uh, versions of the Bible have it worded slightly different, but after each person gives their testimony, they are aware. I'm going to ask them one or two questions about their testimony. Nothing tricky, but I am a self-described and curiously curious kind of person, but I know the person on the street, those out there, would ask a question about how did you do it? And how did you overcome? How did you get past whatever the, the, it may be? And so just a little bit of a dialogue at the end of the testimony to answer that kind of question. But we want to be prepared to not only present our testimony, but to answer the questions for the hope that lies within us. And I think most of us would say that it was only through God's grace out there. Yes. 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 But with, even with God's grace, just as an example, uh, maybe I would have gone into, wanted to go into hiding or something like that. But God said, no, no, I'm with you. I've got your back. And that's my turn. But, but those are the kind of things that we want to learn from. So Miss Agnes, uh, when I spoke with her just before we got started, she said, well, she's locked and loaded. <laughs> <laughs> so, Miss Agnes, locked and loaded. Come on <laughs>
And with the first test that came back, he couldn't find anything. So he sent me back to do another MRI, and he said, this time, I'm going to send you to do the MRI, and I'm going to do it with contracts. So I said, okay. So this time when I went back to the doctor, and he read me the results, and he said, he said, is your husband here with you? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, bring him on in the office with you. So when my husband got in the office, back in the back with me, he put the x-ray up, and he said, you see that right there? And I said, yes. So the natural part of me, fear, came in. Um, he said, well, that's a tumor. He said, and that's what's causing you to fall. So tears started to roll down my eyes. And I was saying to myself, I don't want surgery. I don't want surgery. So he said, well, is it fair for you to fall? and for your children to have to take care of you. I was thinking to myself, I didn't say this to him, but I was thinking to myself, um, I took care of them so that they should take care of me. <laughs> but, um, so, he told me, he said, you have a tumor on your spine, and we're gonna have to go in and get that out. So, um, right there that very day, he said, I know of a doctor. He got right on the phone and called this doctor. And um, the doctor made me an appointment for my surgery within two weeks. So the closer I came to my surgery, the more nervous I got. So we had a young man in our church, who, my assistant pastor, who had gone on to have surgery before me. And I was walking so bad, everybody thought that my problem was in my back. Um, so he had the surgery and he came out okay. So he told me, he said, um, just put a song on your heart and when you go in, you'll be fine. So when they, my husband and my son my husband took me up and my son met, one of my sons met me there. So as they were taking me in the back, like I said, I've been working in the health field the majority of my life. So they put the blood pressure cuff on me to take my blood pressure. And my blood pressure was so high the cuff would pop off. And I was thinking, I said, gee, I said, this thing really hurt. And so the lady kept coming back and she said, um, we need to try to get your blood pressure. I said, but it hurts. And so the OR nurse came up and she said, leave her alone. She said, um, she'll be fine. She said, I can give her something and her blood pressure can go down just like that. So let me, let me tell you the name of the song that I was thinking about. I have no reason to fear. The Lord is my life. That's the name of the song I was thinking about when I went in the back. So they took me downstairs and they did the surgery on me. So I asked the doctor before I went in the operating room, I said, um, am I going to be okay after the surgery? Am I going to be able to walk? He said, Miss Gross, I can't guarantee you that. I said, well, how about driving? Will I be able to drive? He said, I can't guarantee you that either. Well, I'm standing before you today with screws in my neck, but I still can turn my neck. I'm standing before you today walking, because I walked in here, I didn't have a wheelchair, I didn't have a walker, and I didn't have a cane. No. Thank you for you today because God is faithful to me. Yes. He's been so, so faithful to me. And what I want to say is um, the day that I was going in for my, no, the day that I came home for my surgery, Pastor Margot, I think, came up and picked me up that day. 
But um, they were leaving to go on vacation. And her husband, he cooked the whole, he cooked a meal enough, he, he cooked meals for us enough to last a whole week. And I was like, God is good. So I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful to God. Every day that I wake up, it's a test, you know. All I have, if, I, if, if the Lord allows me to wake up and I put my feet on the floor, I say, thank you, Lord, and I push one foot in front of the other. It's not easy. It's not easy. I still get pains and I still, you know, um, I went to the nursing home to visit somebody and when I move too fast, I fall. So the doctor, the devil say, what you gonna do now? I'm gonna be faithful to the God because God brought me out of this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanna thank Florine for having me on this program because she's my prayer partner. You know, there have been times when um, some things have been going on in my life and I can call her and she'll drop what she's doing and she'll listen to what I have to say and she prays for me. And I thank you for that, Flo. Yeah. That's my testimony. Amen.
thanking all of you for being here today. And above all, I'm thanking my family, my mother, my sister, my friends, and my brother here, who is for, uh, from another church, Lighthouse Full Gospel Church. He said he wanted to come and support me today. So I thank you for being here. It took a lot for me to be here today. My nervous system has tried to, to block me from doing this. And I know that's of the devil. Because mm -hmm. the devil don't want me to tell my story. Mm -hmm. But the strength of God said, I have equipped you for this. Mm -hmm. and I, and my story is complicated. So therefore, it was quite a challenge for me to put it all together. I'm standing before you today because there is a power that's greater than me and you. That power is the power of Jesus. God's grace and mercy delivered me from crack cocaine some 14 years ago. I came from a loving and caring family had one sister, no brothers. I grew up with my father, mother, aunt, uncle, grandmother, grandfather, and four cousins, all living in one household. I have two beautiful kids, one son, 39, and one daughter, 19. Needless to say, we had all we needed and some of what we wanted. There were plenty of good eating back then. Everything was homemade. <laughs> Here's my story. We all know that life doesn't go as planned sometimes. I met a man that changed my whole life drastically. He was my first love. He and I were together for seven and a half years. We birthed one handsome son together. My daughter was conceived through a rape. After he and I departed, my whole world turned upside down. When I started this journey of addiction, I felt lost, lonely, broken, hurt, confused, emotionally disturbed, abused mentally, and didn't know where my life was headed. My world became very dark and the world swallowed me quickly. I was an orphan, living in foreign places, with no family, with no friends. There were days when I was homeless, no food to eat, no places to bath or to sleep. But God always opened somebody's doors to let me in. several times. I had a gun to my head, a knife to my throat, and death flashed right before me. One of the men that raped me, I managed to get myself together, pressed charges, and went, and he went to prison. from living in an unkind, dark world. My two beautiful children was, was scarred and hurt by my addiction. My family suffered as well. Throughout my addiction, I felt like I could control this monkey. But he was controlling me.
Throughout my audition, I was able to have some, several uh, prestigious positions and jobs, but I made my money just to support my addiction. Mm. I can remember, like it was yesterday, one of my favorite hymns, Psalms 107, 28. Mm -hmm. Then they cry unto the Lord mm -hmm. in their trouble, mm -hmm. and he brings them out of their distress. Mm -hmm. This verse describes the next season of my life. It was in the year 2010. God's kingdom people came and rescued me because I cried out to the Lord and he heard my cry. He delivered me from crack cocaine. I have not found it necessary to pick up that drug again. Thank you, Jesus. Today, I am a believer. I am an achiever, and I am an overcomer. Yes. Yes. Today, I know that there is a God yes. who can save all yes. if you just call on him when you're in trouble. Sometimes God put things in front of you so you can get in front of him. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. God said, don't worry about anything. Yes. Instead, pray about everything. Yes. Tell God what you need mm -hmm. and thank him for all he has done. Mm -hmm. Today, y'all, I am the treasurer for CCMB, a Cary County Minority Business Allowance. Mm -hmm. I am part of the North, North Beach Volunteer Fire Department Auxiliary Team. Mm -hmm. right. Right now. I, am, uh, I am in church serving the Lord. Yes, and I have been blessed with my own business. Thank you, I've been prepared, preparing taxes for over 20 years. Oh, so if you need my service. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody that's out here who is suffering from any drug addiction, please keep in mind, alcohol is a drug. Yes. I encourage you to go to rehab, to learn about your addiction, and to join a 12-step program. Mm -hmm. This is where it all started for me. I had to do some soul searching and really get to the root of my problem before the healing journey began. The alcohol and drug program was and is an eye-opener. Today I embrace my challenges because it has now allowed me the opportunity to grow. Mm -hmm. This is my testimony. Situations 
You know, so my family has always been there. My sister, she opened up her doors and um, allowed me to move from Texas back into her home. And I came with a package, my daughter. So my family has always been there for me. Like I said, they're loving, they're caring, and they have always had open arms for me. I was so far away from them that, you know, it wasn't always there um, physically, but they was always there. And really where I'm, where I'm asking and uh, asking about this is please, and I want to see if I'm interpreting the process and what you're saying correctly, please just accept me. I'll, I'll get beyond where I am with Christ's help, but I don't need someone judging me. Okay, now I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I do know that some people have felt that way.
And I prayed to God. I said, God, remove these people from me. Three days later, I was in the Calvary County Detention Center facing drug charges. You know, and I'm sitting down there, I was like, man, I asked God to remove the people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in jail. <laughs> and then I sat down there, I sat down there in, the, in the day room at the Calvary County Detention Center. I said, man, I'm the only one in the family and in out of prison. You know, I get a job. Man, uh, what is it? You know, so I, I asked God, I said, uh, Spirit of God, I said, reveal to me on this journey, you know, where, where I went wrong. And uh, God took me back to 2010 when I was in. See, that's why today I know I'd be mindful what promises I make to God. He said, Amen. in 2010, you said, I got you out of that mess mm -hmm. that you were running for me. But you didn't do it. So now you're back again. And for some reason, this whole journey this time was uncomfortable. I started out at the detention center, and down there now, if two people in a cell and one of them leave, the next man got to go into a cell where there's already two people and sleep on the floor. So I was like, man, it wasn't never none of this. <laughs> I'm thinking about the negative 
that I'm gonna do in the street. <laughs> you know, so God said, man, you you playing back and forth. Yeah. You know? So this time I said, God, it wasn't playing. You know, I go to court, the judge say uh, 20 years the vision is correct. Now everybody waiting for how much he suspended. Mm -hmm. He said 20 years in the vision of correction. Mm -hmm. I said, huh? He said, 20 years in the division of correction, but I'm going to encourage you to go up there and do the right thing. And I'll see you when I bring you back for reconsideration. So I'm mad. I ain't trying to do nothing. You know? But, but when, when I go in the cell and sit back and really dawn on, I say, well, God has given me exactly what I asked for because I asked him on this journey. Give me whatever I need to do to get it right. I mean, it was so bad. When I got to 20 years, when I went back, another thing I had, if you get anything over five years and you come back to court, you got to immediately go in lockup. You know, so they put me in lockup. But what hit me was the facilitator, the administrator of the Cabot County Detention Center, major region. He come down and come in my cell and he, you know how when you feel somebody that feel your pain and really feel bad for you? you know, I got it from Miss Walman one time when I had her for a lawyer and I went up there and I could just see the pain. And, and she said, man, you too good of a guy. How do you keep messing up? See, so all that played back on this journey. So Major Reese came in and he said, man, I just heard the news up front. I couldn't believe it. So he was like, did Judge Chan leave me yet? I said, yes, sir. So he said, 20 years? I said, yeah. And because the IOP is the judge program. So I was like, uh, you know, I said, man, I look at it, man. This man, is my fourth trip up. You know, I got to get it together, man. These people ain't playing. You know, so I go up. I, ain't, I didn't even make it overnight. I, the next day, I looked, they hit the door, said, stay true up front. Ready to take you up the road. I said, man, I'm, they get me out of here tonight. So I walk up, up the road. Up there is like over there the drug market. Any kind of drug you want is in the facility. I mean, just about every facility up there. They got jailhouse wine, they got drugs that is out here, they got K2, all that stuff up there running around. And I'm like, man, this is what God sent me to. So I went to the church the first one. Yeah, you got you got guys uh, having episodes off K2 to exact enough. So I said, uh, man, it gotta be more than life than this. You know? So I said, I see in this environment there is no whole lot of positivity. So I said, man, I gotta I gotta feed myself. You know, I said, because I'm not gonna pick myself through this again. So I started getting into numerous programs. You see, I already made a conscious decision decision at the county jail that God has to be the foundation. But if I got him as the foundation, see whatever I get into, because he's the foundation, it's gonna produce. That's right. So I so I got got up the road, I got to get in the positive program, going to church. COVID hit. Now I'm gonna be honest, that's scary. And I said the worst of the thing I would ever want to do. Now this is the same dude that had all party in the street. I said, man, I don't want to be in a situation where I pass on and family in my around. But I'm trapped in it. You know, I'm, I'm doing time. And COVID, when COVID hit in there, I said, Lord, please, please get me out of here. Because I see a brother today hear the word of more and he passed from COVID. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a game in there. I said, Lord, yeah, I, I need you. you know, I got family out there, I got kids, I'm in here. I said, Lord, you got my attention. Just re open the doors this time. So I'm up there, I get a job. So they got they're up there, they got incentive because it's so overcrowded, you're trying to push people out. Uh, if you get a job, they give you day for day. And when you go in, they take a half of your cent for certain crime. But they tell me I don't fit it. And I'm looking at the paperwork, yeah, it's possession with a tent. That's the charge you got. So they say, 
Now I don't detain you. So, COVID hit. Uh, my roommate, he did. So now I'm really scared. You know, so they come in and do it. They said, look, both of y'all, we we'll have to go down the house and you and five in isolation. Are you? Because your roommate tested positive for COVID. So I'm like, oh, Lord, now I hope I ain't got it. You know, so they say, well, we're going to test you. And if you don't have it, then we, you can come back to the unit. So they did that. I didn't have it. Praise the Lord. I went on back to the unit. But while I was sitting down there in three days, you know, God just showed everything back to me. You know, and it was no excuse. God said, you have people in your ears telling you, coming off of the street. But see, my thing was, you know how you feel you old enough? That ain't gonna happen to me. See, they they bust them, but they ain't gonna get me. And, but when you're doing the wrong thing, eventually, you know, your time will come. So, but, so eventually, I wrote to jail. I said, man, my time ain't right. I should be getting any credit. So lo and behold, somehow they got it straight. So my counsel called, called me. I was, matter of fact, I was walking to work. I passed him on the walk. He said, uh, Mr. Cole, he said, come in. He said, uh, first of all, sign this paper. And I was in medium security. I said, well, man, I need to know what I'm signing, man. Mm -hmm. He said, well, this is paperwork for minimum security because Cal County sent some paperwork here. They gave you some credit for when you was dying But what happened was when we punched it in the system, all the times you were saying that you was eligible for the credit, you were, and it kicked in. I said, oh, God, God working. He up to something. Because I had started helping brothers on the tier. You know what? Like me, I wake up in the morning, praise God, you know, I tell the brother, man, how you doing today? Tell the officers, how you do? See, because they didn't put me in there. There's a lot of guys in there, they're mad with the world. <laughs> Everybody that done something to suffer them. You know, I know, I know I was a problem, so I, I ain't mad at nobody. All right. But I started, you know, trying to encourage the brothers. And like I said, then that movement came when I went to minimum security. Then I get a job at a warehouse up there. You know, Father Ron, I used to call him on the record. The, uh, Warehouse loving, you know, a little 95 cent a day job, <coughs> loading trucks with the forklift, so that's stuff I like to do. But they love me. But like every time, like every three months, your counsel come to you to see if they can switch you to a better job or whatever. But the whole time, the administration was going to my account, no, we, nah, we want to earn it, we want to keep earning it. You know, even though I would have stayed with them because I was talking to a worker. You know, these people from the street, everybody's going through. If you, even those who are in Christ, you're going through. But if you ain't got Christ, then it's really hard when you're going through. So, uh, you know, one of the women used to come in, you know, talk about how she can't stop dreaming her husband this and her husband that. So I said, well, you know, first of all, you got to do what's best for you. I'm not telling you what to do. I don't know, but I'm just saying you got to do what's best for you. This, by this time, the judge had denied me four times of coming back. So I said, man, he told me in the court, he going to bring me back. I done done everything, you know, four times. He denied me. So one day, I, I called mom, and I'm wearing her to death. He said, boy, you just got to have patience. You come back when you're all ready for this coming <laughs> So I called her one day about something, and she said, uh, she said, boy, you come back to court Monday. I said, who? She said, you. She said, yeah, he got you set to come back to court Monday. And I already knew. I done got everything from A to Z that the judge asked. And I got the favor of God all through yeah. the court. Oh, yeah. So I already knew. So I went back to court with all the work ladies. I said, man, look, they're going to move me Friday down to Jessica because that's where you pick me up and take me to court all through the system. Everybody goes to Jesse, but then Baltimore come get you, Calvary, and run. So I said, Friday morning when I leave, I ain't coming back. 
I said, you had a TV, food. <laughs> <laughs> um, he said, man, you sure? Man, I know I ain't coming back. I said, for one, I got him with me. And he prepared the way, because I stopped asking mom about court. And see when that said, you got court money, see, I knew it was gone. All right, Jim. And then I get down there, COVID's still hanging. So what they said they're going to do, they really couldn't do it, because of COVID. They had told me work for these. I came back, but it wasn't no work really. So he said, I, he said, I'll give you a choice. He said, you can either do 18 months straight at the county jail, or you can do the adult drug court. So I was like, wow. man, 18 months, lay back, watch TV, I'm close. I'm back home, I know the family will come see me. The commissary will be right. And I said, you know what? Now, there's a reason it's for because they wouldn't give me drug treatment before I went out. So I said, there's a reason for why I was only taking that. And I said, well, I said, well, I'll said, well, take the adult drug court. Mm -hmm. So I went to uh, Lepid County Jail. And, and the crazy thing was, now I had a 20 year sentence. Mm -hmm. he, he pretty much put it on hold until I finished the drug court. But when I was scheduled to go to the rehab in Harwood, Project Chesapeake, DOC contacted the county jail and said, uh, oh, no, nah, he can't go. He, we, he still got another set, you know, with DOC. And I said, what? So I'm waiting for him to rehab to come get me. I ain't nothing happening. So then I find out what's going on. So other dudes in the park, they mad for me. I said, man, look. It's all good. God got he just he, he ain't ready for me yet. So for short, the judge took the 12 year sentence back so I could go to the rehab. So it was already 32 years on, on the table. Which the 12 years supposed to have been gone. That was ever since uh, 96. He said he don't even know how that's still, but he said, regardless, you know, I wiped it out. So I'm like, Man, this man it took 32 years back. God, you showing off. <laughs> so, I, so I get to the rehab, I'm, I'm on fire now. And I said, man, I'm now amazed at what God is going to do next. Yeah. And he's showing up. Yeah. And I said, as long as I keep doing right, oh, he's showing up. Yeah. So I get to the rehab, and uh, they say, I'm looking for 30 days. And I'm, I'm really trying to get back home. But I'm looking for 30 days. They said, well, anybody in the drug court, you got to do 90. That's, that's the procedure. So I said, well, all right, I guess I'm doing 90. So after 30, they asked me, one of the guys, well, the, the president, every, every rehab, this rehab, all of their homes, they got a president in the rehab, which is a client, just like me, you know. So he made an announcement one morning that, he be ready to leave, and Brother James will be the next president. Which was a buddy of mine, I talk to him all the time. But then when the staff come in that Monday, uh, he come to me and said, man, I miss Tammy, and will approach you with the president. I said, man, you know, I already told the brother. He gonna be the president. And like I said, I, I was all right with James, but now I'm like, man, what? What I'm gonna do, man? That's my man. He happy about being the president. And then I heard the voice say, "You're not serving." So when she came to him, I said, "She said she see the agony in me." And she said, "Look, you ain't got to an answer today. This was a Monday." She said, uh, "Thank you, buddy, and let me know by Wednesday." So now by this time, it's starting to float in the rehab. Man, they not ask. They should call me E. Man, they not ask E to be the president. So I'm looking at Jane, you know, we still uh, communicating and acting the same, but I, I was like, man, I know that's going to hurt him, man. I said, but Jane, go. Two in the morning, when Miss Tammy came in, I went to her, I said, yeah, I need, I need to put <laughs> I, it was just certain things. You know, when other people see stuff in you, uh, sometimes you got you to take it from what it is. See, my main thing was, 
Anything positive or anything dealing with God, I will run from it. But anything dealing with the street, I'm right there. You know, so when I really looked at it, I said, no, you got to turn the table. You know? All right now. So when I became president, and how I go is number one council, the second council, the president. But the president, all you do is uh, maintain the house once the, once the administration leaves. You know, make sure they ain't present for the meeting. Make sure they ain't attending for the Zoom meeting. Make sure they do their chores. You know, but I used to tell them all, man, look, we all men in here. I ain't for babysitting. You know, this is what comes with the position. Man, just be a man, you know? And uh, so they put me to the test when they knew I was leaving. It was like a week before mm -hmm. I was graduating. You know, they, uh, the head tech called me off and he said, uh, Ms. Tang said she's running a little late this morning uh, before you start the class. I said, start the class? I said, man, I'm a client. He said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're the president. And she said, just start the class, get it going. I said, man, they don't pay me to teach you the class, you know. But then I thought of what I said. This is an opportunity to go and measure. So I go out there, uh, get the chalkboard, and all I'm doing is sharing with them about, about my story. You know, I said, man, we can sit in here, blame your upbringing, your mother, your father, uh, your cousin, your neighborhood. Uh, I didn't have this, I didn't have this, but at the end of the day, none of that stuff matters. You know, it starts with the individual with the decision and choice that you make. So, the, the more God started using, man, the more, you know, like the more exciting I was getting shamed with the brother. So then Miss Tanner come in, and she's sitting in the back. I said, well, what's, what's going on? You know, I'm just holding it down for you. She said, oh, no. Boy, you know, so God used me then. Then the second counselor heard about it, so he used me again that afternoon. But he showed me that, man, when you're doing with God, a sign for you to do. I mean, I got blessings coming now. I don't even have room. You know how they say, you got room. If you don't do it, you remember laying on that floor of the county of Tennessee? You remember eating that cold or uh, baked chicken of Hayes Town? It's right behind the door. And I, and I said, no, nah, I'm not a, uh, you know what? Tell you where you brought me to now. Uh, every house, glory to God, every house I've been in, I've had favor. You know, I went from Project Chesapeake as a president. Then I went to the 3.1 house, which is a step down, and uh, I would say supervision. You just go out to get a job. You just got to be there and meet at the house. You got to do outside meeting. Uh, they got one room, a single man bed, and it's supposed to be for the person who's been there alone when the person in there leave. Uh, three weeks after I got there, the dude, uh, Stayed up, so he wasn't coming back. You know, so they packed the stuff, set it aside. So everybody over in the house, the old man, asked, John, get in that room. <laughs> so I come in from work, the council called me, hey, eat. I go and say, uh, how would you like going in there, our single man? I said, I love it. I would love it. I would love it. I have been, been four and a half years in a cell with a, a, a with guy. Man, I would love being in there. <laughs> he said, uh, he said, I tell you what, tomorrow when you come in from work, you know, you go ahead and move your stuff. They already know it's going to be a little slack from some of the other guys. Mm -hmm. But it was cool because, see, a lot of them respected me, and, and they said, man, if anybody deserves it. it was, see, because when I'm in class, mm -hmm. like they said, I'm locked and loaded. Yeah, they got mm -hmm. they weren't but their phone, their baby mom, you know, <laughs> ain't, ain't none of this. Yeah, they draw a children's thing. Man, when you go out, you got to focus on you. So you can't be focusing on this one trying to go out with it. You know, I had a, so I go to a club in uh, Annapolis called Club 164. It's 
AA and NA meetings all day, every hour on an hour, from 7 in the morning to 9 o'clock at night. Anybody in one of them houses of a night is pretty much going to the room because it's mandatory in the house. So I, we in there, and uh, like I said, I, I like to be engaged in the recovery process. I'm always saying <coughs> when I go into the, the meetings. So uh, the house I'm at now, they came up with a uh, <coughs> big brother uh, platform where you got to, if somebody approaches you in a meeting, you got to take him out. So I said, all oh, of you know, <laughs> already know what's behind that, you know. So uh, a girl approached me, you know, they got the bullet and uh, they just had a special for all the houses. You got to take somebody out. They giving you the money, you know, for whatever expense. So I, I take the girl out and said, look, this is only because of the program. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking, and I'm trying to drink a little bottle. So when the meal is over, I take you back to your house, you in. I'm going back. There is no further communication with me. I'll see you in the meeting. I'll speak and all that. Man, I got to the meeting two days later. And I'm buying in relationship with the day, I ain't for none of that. She, uh, she come to me and said, you didn't even have the audacity to come to the meeting in that day. See, I said, see who? I told you. To be in a relationship now, I'm still working on ministry. So, uh, so I see the dudes at the house now. They all out front, up and down the street, hooping and hollering and cell phone. You know, so I just stand there in the window and say, thank God. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I ain't got to put up with that. I mean, that's just total nonsense. You know, so now they come up with a room that you can only talk on your phone in back of the house. Because people were complaining about the guy in front of the house. But I just sit there and, and, and tell God, you know, because I go in different rehab and speak. Glory to God. But I tell them, I meet with the staff before I go in. I said, look, 12 step, all that stuff for NAA. Mm -hmm. But when I come in here, I can only share the truth. And what brought me through was Christ and Christ alone. Mm -hmm. oh, nothing but positivity coming to me because I'm already grounded and rooted. I said, but for me to come in and tell the guy that this program and that program is going to do it, it's not going to work for me. You know? So some say I, we get back at you and they have you. But some, <laughs> some I go on a regular. Like tonight I got to go to a one in Glen Burn at, at nine. But I see I take joy in because you know, I said I'm giving the brother hope. You know, after every week, man, he come to me. You know, and, uh, man, thank you for coming in. And, uh, you know, like Ron, he might ask me a few questions. Uh, some want to, you know, continue to communicate, but I tell him, you know, I have to tell him a couple more times before it uh, changes the information. Like, I got to make sure, you see, I'm running it there, I got to go on me. All right. Yes, all right. Because, uh, uh, because when I was at the Reba house, up in Reba, Maryland, in Project Chesapeake, you know when you get it together, you just want the best for the brother. So we have a brother in the house. We used to leave out for work at the same time. He don't drive. So I said, well, man, you know, he asked me one morning taking the work. He worked at a night this morning. So I said, there's a little out of the way, but man, I, I take, you know, and then, then it began to be on the record. But one morning, he had to go in late, and I went to work. And this is what taught me, man, just because you're doing all right, and you want the best for people, you all say you can't open that door. The brother, they left the house, there was four of them in, in the uh, little Jeep. Now, you know, in the nap, man, you can't get hooping and hollering out of the window. They, 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 they go up to the hall, they hooping and hollering out of the way, and the police pull them on. Tell all of them, you know, get out. 
they, they get to going through the field and the very dude that I took to work every morning. Mm. Now my background is all drugs. Mm -hmm. He took a crack pipe and stuck under the man pipe. Mm -hmm. Didn't even tell him man. Mm -hmm. So you know they back there laughing and joking, all these little tan feet up. And so the man come to him and say, I'm gonna let it go. But you had a crack pipe under your seat. And when I got home and heard about it, my first thought was, man, if this dude was with me and he stuck it out of the seat. Once they pulled me up, so I said, so now I got a truck and a car. Both passenger seats, oh, I got something in it. <laughs> 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 Man, shoot, I'm, I'm loaded down. <laughs> 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 because, I, I found out, man, it was yep. not a game. But like I said, when I was in prison with the COVID, you know, it scared me, man. People, people were dying left and right, man. I was like, man, uh, I at least want to be where I found it or something. And then, uh, the, it's gangs. Gangs that just took over the prison. But, man, you might go to eat. You got just one running out in the grass with a knife stuck in the back, you know, just in it all behind drugs. You know, so I said, man, uh, I used to be a guy that played that part, fun with the drugs. You know, so I said, uh, God, when you open the door, I ain't no looking back. You know, and, and everything I do today, if it ain't positive, I don't fool it. I said, I don't have nothing against the next man or the next person, but I know what fits me. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm, up, I'm up in uh, all right now. I either go to work, go to a meet, go to a, a rehab or a youth house, speak to the bro, or I'm at the house. Uh, if guys want to uh, look at movies, man, I'm in my room looking at Eric Thomas, Steve Harvey, <laughs> T.D. J. See, because I know now I got the feet. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't, it's like, See, I took the foot off, my, off the cover back then in 2015. Mm -hmm. you know, after being home for two years, taking it as a, as a game, I can defeat the devil in my own strength, which is a lot. And he showed me that in the game. So I said, I got to feed. So every day, I feed. He said, Ron, thanks to Ron, he used to send me a, whatever book I asked him for. When I was behind the door, he sent it. You know, I just tell him, man, you ain't got to do the next day after. But I ain't going to work. He just want to make sure. I, <laughs> one man I said, but, I said, but uh, my mentor, man, is, uh, I met him through Major Reed. He called Major Reed. And he said, uh, that this was back here in 19. He said, is there anybody in the prison system that is worth uh, me investing in? And he right there, he said, made the reason without a hesitation. He said, yes, sir. The name of Ernest Coast, I got his address. <laughs> you know, and he wrote me. And when I, I got the mail, I said, man, wow, well, Cooper, I don't know these people. <laughs> you know, so I wasn't going to open. And I said, man, I don't know what this is. But I, he was playing to me. You know, made the reason, gave me information and all. And I'm telling you, from that point on, stuff that you can't get done in prison, happened for me, and I know it was God working through him. I got a driver's life renewed in prison. Now you wouldn't have to be a good guy, be a high man. I mean, I knew he was serious when he told me he called the governor Hogan home home. Because the medical department wasn't responding to his call down at the jail out of there. But he jumped through all the hula hoops and everything, and he got it to where I got an eye exam in prison. The medical department forwarded him the results. He had a contact person within the MVA working directly with him for me. And he saw the results of him. And I got a problem like he saw him a couple hours in the day. God was in the midst of all of that. Yes. So I enjoy every day, man, going forward, yeah. knowing that Christ got me. All I gotta do is do the next right thing. You know, right. I tell the brothers in the house, do the next.
that's why he's saying even when you're by yourself. Because it's easy to say. Like I said, back in the day, he said, oh, Pastor John ain't here. <laughs> so see, he see. That's right. That's right. I see. Man, you're the next white right man, even when you're by yourself, man. Jesus. You know, that I, learned, I learned today, man, that there's no better life than a life in Christ. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I'm still going to show up. But I tell you, man, you got a better chance. Of succeeding in life and make it through whatever storm is coming your way with Christ in the midst. That's right. You know, you can't do it on your own. And uh, you know, I just thank God, man, that I was able to, like, uh, like a couple of them said, now all this week, I'm like, man, how can I get out of here? <laughs> I said, well, I'm in the house. I'm going to say something happened at the house. I'm going to say they need me at work. You know, all week, I'm wrestling. And you go again. <laughs> Cold baked chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, uh, I better get that quick fast in her. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, in all, you know, all actuality, man, I, I'm enjoying life in there. You know, I like uh, you know, staying with people. You know, how God, how God brought me to. I, I like encouraging. Men and women, I don't, you know, I don't care who it is. After meeting, man, after meeting, you know, I see some people, you know, they might speak to me, man. I went back out, uh, I'm back for the fifth time, you know, I'm trying it again, you know, and then when I hear stuff like that, I just try to catch them by myself, and once again, I say, look, for me, there's only one way out, and that's Christ Jesus. All them all avenues you try, that's why it's the sixth time that you're back trying to, you know, for one, you got to get out of the way, trust God, and let him lead the way. I said, uh, but you ain't got to take my word, just try. You know, and like I say, um, life is good today. Like I said, I got a good job. I, I, I work today. You know, mom said, boy, you working today? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to be here. <laughs> I'm going to work with you. And uh, I'm just, in, and, and I got favorite aid. You know, superintendent, he called me uh, the hard worker. But see, all I do is when I see him pull at the, up at the site, I just kick and ask him, yeah, I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> I just pick up a step. He said, I'm a hard worker. They do it when he pull up. They run to him and they want to talk about how was his weekend. Yeah. You know how the fat man. The man is coming to make sure work is there. <laughs> that's all I do. Is sit on there and work. But see, that's just the thing that God has shown me. You do what you're supposed to. Let me handle the rest. That's right. And, and, and it work out for you. But see, yeah. what I was trying to do is do what God can do. But only right. He can do. That's right. You know, that's right. I just. Uh, you know, thankful today, man, that he gave me, like I said, a lot of opportunities. But my release date wasn't in 2032. Mm -hmm. This was one in 24. And I, I came back in 22, 10 years ago. Thank so you, I, Lord. Technically, I'm going to still be in there. Uh -huh. So I know it was him. Yeah. 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 So that's why I make sure that I give it to him. Amen. Yeah. 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 Testimony as well, which I work with the man. That uh, he's known as E-Man. Uh, you all may already know that, I don't know. But I will tell you that uh, I personally spoke with the warehouse supervisor when you were in Eggerstown, spoke with Major Reese, and you want to book, sure, I don't know, I'm getting to do you. Yeah, make sure you read it. That's one thing. <laughs> but over the phone, we're going to be accountable. What did you read? Yeah. And what did you get from the book? And so, Marty, my wife and I had to make the determination we did. Is Ernest worth the investment? I hear you. I hear what you're saying, but I gotta see it. Is right. Ernest? Probably run. Not just words. We saw it in his life. We saw that he was transformed, how Christ can transform the mind from what it was to what it is and what it is yet to be. 
And when we hold each other accountable with Christ working through us, yes, we're going to count on you to mentor others. And I know you will. But you know, the power of the testimony is, Miss Agnes, you've been through some medical challenges. Lavelle, you've been through similar challenges. Christine, Amen. What I'm, I'm building up to is that each one of you, for God's help, have made it through, and you can legitimately say to the person who may be experiencing